Hello, my fellow Tagalog learners. How is everyone doing this week? I wanted to make a, this video about simple sentence structure according to the textbook. But uh, I had made this lesson for last Sunday to upload. But my Tagalog friends and I were discussing this particular rule in Tagalog grammar that they feel is incorrect. In the textbook, they talk about the simple sentence structure being the subject and the predicate, whereas the ung word and the nung verb, uh, nung word are together making a complete sentence, whereas the ung word is the focus or the main subject, whereas the nung is the predicate. This is what de describes the subject. And to my Filipino friends, they feel that this is incorrect. It may be technically right, but the way they speak Tagalog, this is not how they do it. So to them, ang babae ng senador, ang babae being the woman or the lady being the focus, the ng senador being the predicate explaining who the woman is the woman is a senator, is incorrect. They feel how they were raised is nung being of. So when they speak, when they read this sentence, it's unclear to them. So even though this may be technically the correct way, I'm no longer going to bring it up that way because we are trying to learn conversational Tagalog, how the common people in the Philippines would speak. So, that being said, the woman, I, ang senador, ang babae, I, senador, the woman is a senator, and this, we're just going to take off, because the way the textbook brings out is no matter which order you put it, the ung word is the focus, and the nung word would be the predicate explaining the focus. So we're going to do it the real way or the way that common people in the Philippines speak Tagalog. So, ang babae, I, senador. Ang senador, I, babae. The senator is a woman. So, ang senador would be the subject. I, is is babae woman ang senador i babae the senator is a woman ang lalake i police the man is a police or a policeman ang police i lalake the policeman is a man Ang delega, I, nurse. The single woman is a nurse. Delega is a single woman. So, ang delega, I, nurse. The single woman is a nurse. Ang nurse, I, delega. The nurse is a single woman. Ang babae, I, estudiante. The child is a student. Ang bata, I, estudiante. The child is a student. So this would be ang here. And we would switch those two around. Ang bata, the child, is a student. Ang bata, I, estudiante. Ang binata ay manganganta. The bachelor is a singer. Now this has two special characters in a row. Manganganta. Ang binata ay manganganta. The bachelor is a singer. Ang manganganta ay binata. The singer is a bachelor. 
So now we're going to go into the compound sentence structures, which would be a subject, and then a verb, and then an object. So, ang batang babae pumunta sa eskwelahan. The girl went to school. <clears throat> Bata means child. Babae means female. So to put these two words together, you need a connector, which is ang in this case. Ang batang babae pumunta sa eskwelahan. The girl went to school. Ang babae ay nagtatrabaho sa klinika. The woman works at the clinic. Ang kusinero ay nagluto sa restauran. The chef cooks in the restaurant. And another word, or the common word that they use for restauran is kainan. Which, if you look that up in the dictionary, that means dining room. But commonly they use kainan as restaurant. So, ang kusinero ay nagluto sa restauran or kainan. Ako gusto ng mga larong Filipino or gusto ko ng mga larong Filipino. They commonly use the second one, gusto ko, instead of ako gusto. But I put this in here to show that if you put the subject before the, na the verb, you have to use a ko. If you put it after the verb, you say ko only. You don't use the a ko. So gusto ko ang mga larong Filipino. I like Filipino games. A ko is I. Gusto is the verb. Nang mga larong is games, Filipino, Filipino games. Or gusto ko nang mga larong, Filipino. I like Filipino games. Ako ayaw nang mga larong, Filipino. Or ayaw ko nang mga larong, Filipino. So ayaw is I don't like. So if you put the subject before the verb, you have to say a ko. If you put it after the verb, you just say ko only. Ayaw ko ng mga larong Filipino. And they commonly use ko. Ayaw ko or gusto ko the, with the subject after the verb. So that's going to be a little getting used to for us. But according to... The formula, you put the subject, the verb, the object. So, ako gusto ng mga larong Filipino. That's the formula. But, they use the second one, which is the verb, then the subject, and then the object. Gusto ko ng mga larong Filipino. Or, ayaw ko ng mga larong Filipino. I like Filipino games. I don't like Filipino games. So let's do a few questions. Gusto ba nya ako? Does he or she like me? Gusto ba? Ba makes any statement into a question. So if you don't use a question word like sino or bakit, you need to use ba to make the statement into a question. So gusto ba nya ako? Does he or she like me? Gusto mo ba ng baseball? Do you like baseball? So here is the verb. This is the subject. Ba makes it into a question. Ng baseball then would be the object. Gusto mo ba ng baseball? Sino ang gusto mong boxinero? Now in this sentence, there's not really a an American English equivalent, but it's kind of like who, what you're saying is, who do you like that's a boxer? Sino, who, angusto, mong, like you, boxinero. So who do you like that's a boxer? Sino, angusto, mong, boxinero. And if you ask a Filipino, they'll usually say Mani Pacquiao. 
He's the main boxer in the Philippines. So, bakit ayaw mo ng arnis? Why don't you like arnis, which is the Filipino type of a martial art that they use the two wooden sticks? Arnis. Bakit ayaw mo ng arnis? Why don't you like arnis or this martial arts in the Philippines? So, according to the book, and the way that Filipinos actually speak are different. And you know, we do the same thing here in the United States. There's the certain laws that you learn from the textbook in English class, especially back when you had to uh, diagram sentences. You had to say certain things in a certain way. But in actuality, when we communicate in American English, we do it different. So, I'm still going to go by our textbook our textbook, Elementary Tagalog, but I'm going to be speaking more and more with my Filipino friends on how they actually use the Tagalog language in their everyday sentences and conversations because that's what we want, is to have the conversational Tagalog. So these sheets were going to be on the Pinterest page, Tagalog Learner. So if you want these pages, be sure and go over there to Pinterest and pick up these sheets. And also, please... Um, if you have any comments, please let us know down below so we'll know how Tagalog is really spoken by the everyday people, even though there may be rules of one way or another. And also let us know how we're doing on our lessons. Please smash that like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Until then, study hard!